actually, before you go skipping off to all the exciting bits in the video. All right, only for you guys. Look what I've done. Ooh, it's too real. So what are we looking for when we're inspecting a cylinder? It would be putting a lot of stress on that uh, small end bearing and the big end bearing here. So the bearing at the... Okay, the piston. So the piston ring, unfortunately, is toast. Can, can we all see that? Because uh, the Mini is in like 2,001 pieces and we're heading to the track in two days time. Where, mate, where are you? Uh, just stretch that ring as you put it on too much. Hi everyone, it's Mark here and today we're working on the Zanoa engine out of the FG four wheel drive one fifth scale R seeker. Still a mouthful. Anyway, last week I suggested it, you legends asked for it. So today we're gonna to do a quick and dirty top end rebuild on the Zanoa engine out of the mini before it goes back together and we head back to the track for some racing. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, share. Uh, actually, before you go skipping off to all the exciting bits in the video, uh, I just wanna thank everyone for the love and support. Uh, I really do appreciate it. For those of you that have taken the time to subscribe to the channel, for those of you that have taken the time to, to comment, to like, and to share, not only here on YouTube, but as well as Facebook and, and Instagram. I'm on Instagram, guys, 76 Thomas and M, check me out. Uh, anyway, I really appreciate it. It's really awesome to see the RC community come together and share thoughts and, um, and inspiration. It's not only me that's grateful for that, but the wider RC community, everybody is benefiting from the comments and sharing and, and the support. It is really great to see. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video and thanks for watching, guys. All right, let's get into this motor. So the motor is really, really dirty. So the, um, before you can see there, it is looking very, very neglected. So what we'll do is we'll just strip it down really quickly and give it a clean before I pull that cylinder off and have a look because um, the number one enemy for, a, for, for the internals of an engine is dirt. So you wanna make sure that thing's spotless before you before you take it apart. So we'll take this off, we'll take the clutch off too because I want to give it a good clean and um, if we get any of that cleaning uh, degreaser on that clutch shoe or any of that oil, it's gonna destroy it. So let's get that off. Um, just before you do, it's always well worth to have a look at your clutch bearing. You can see there, that one's running really, really well. It feels nice and solid and the same with this lay shaft. Just make sure there's uh, the bearings are okay in this because this is actually a plastic plastic holder, so they can fail. You can get an aluminium upgrade one, but um, the plastic one's doing all right in our case. So we'll pull this clutch off real quick. All right, so I've put a block off plate on the intake, one on the exhaust. I'm gonna link the fuel lines up as well so we don't get any garbage in those. So fuel line linked. I've taken the pull starter off as well because the internal mechanisms inside there don't like uh, degreaser too much. So uh, let's have a look. One last look at the dirty motor. Let's just see how clean we can get that.
there it is, nice and clean. Came up well. You want it nice and clean because when we pull the cylinder off, if any of that dirt gets in there, there'll be trouble. Next step is to inspect the parts. So we'll take a close look at that now. All right, let's take a close look at the cylinder. I'm gonna show you um, maybe what a serviceable cylinder looks like, one that you could reuse. And I'll show you what a used cylinder looks like also. I'll just see, we'll get the camera to focus. Ah, that isn't focusing. All right, only for you guys. Look what I've done. Ooh, it's too real. So what are we looking for when we're inspecting a cylinder? We're looking for this Nicosil coating. So these cylinders are cast out of cast aluminium and then the bores, the cylinder itself, is coated with Nicosil. So what is Nicosil? Nicosil is spelled N-I-K-A-S-I-L. So it's silicon carbide. What's silicon? Well, silicon's a slippery bit. Um, it's slipperier than a bloody sausage in a frying pan. Carbide is the hard bit. So they say that the carbide is 10 times harder than a chrome sleeve. So if, 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 if that carbide's 10 times harder than a chrome sleeve, it's about a million times harder than the aluminium in there. Um, this is what you're looking for to have inside your cylinder. I'll also show you what a brand new cylinder looks like um, so you can so you get the idea. Anyway, so the whole cylinder is coated with this coating in here and you can see here, um, this one's heavily worn and it's worn away. And you can see uh, what happens here when it wears off. So ordinarily, we'd have a good coating of this Nicosil all over the cylinder. What's happened here? is it's worn heavily right in this um, area here. That's where the compression ring on the piston uh, seats against the cylinder wall. It's the highest wear point. You can see there, you can even feel a bit of a lip there and a bit of a lip there. Why does that happen? It's because the aluminium is so soft and that compression ring is just eating away at that cylinder now. So you can see here, this is where the piston extends to. You can see that's where the ring starts and that's the travel of the compression stroke. You might see a little bit in your cylinder, a little bit of wear around the following areas. One would be just on the edges of these um, transfer ports. So what happens and why would you see wear there in a small amount of wear? It's because the coating's a little bit thinner uh, where the transfer port is and the oil doesn't um, stay to the ring as well as it's moving through its travel. The same with the exhaust port why would it wear a little bit more around the exhaust port when you look in your cylinder? The exhaust port's the, again the hottest part, so it's the part that's going to ex, uh, expand the first and really put pressure on uh, the Nicosil coating. And also the same thing again. So the coating's just slightly thinner through that area and also the, the ring cops it there. So the ring doesn't get a chance to hold on to that oil that gets um, brushed off. So as it passes there, the ring isn't quite as lubricated. So that's why you might see a little bit more wear around the exhaust port. So what does a new cylinder look like? Well, this is a sparkly new cylinder. Check it out. So this is a great example of what a good Nicosil coating looks like. You can see it in there, sprayed all around. One thing to note here is a good example of uh, what I pointed out before, of why you might see a little bit of wear here. See the coating here? It's gonna be thin. Look, you can see here where it's just not sprayed quite correctly there. So it's gonna be a bit of a high wear point there and something to look out for. So you can just see on mine here, we've got a nice matte finish. It's just starting to wear off on the edge here. And you can see just deeper down in there, 
that around the exhaust port, it's just starting to wear as well. So a quick look at the intake side. As you can see, the surface is starting to wear there, but it's, it's fine. So when you look up inside there, you can still see where the ring moves up and down. There's still a good coating of that Nicosil coating. So I think we might keep this cylinder. So um, we'll look at the piston and look at the ring. Uh, even though I am keeping this cylinder, gonna reuse it, I am gonna replace the gasket in between here. So these plastic insulators can be a bit troublesome. They can warp and deform. So definitely if you're reusing this, redo that gasket while you're here. If you get, an, if you get a leak in here, an air leak, you'll be chasing tune, the engine will overheat, and eventually you'll destroy a motor out of that one. Okay, the piston. So the piston ring, unfortunately, is toast. You can tell here that I've let it go too far, so I haven't changed that ring soon enough, and I've had a little bit of blow by here. So what's blow by? The ring is designed to compress the air fuel mixture in here for combustion. So when that piston rises to the top of the cylinder and compresses the air, if this ring isn't sealing against the cylinder wall tight enough, you'll get some of that compression leak past here and that's what's happened there. So you can see that stain there. That, that ring there hasn't been able to contain the compression with the engine. So you can see this is the intake side of the, of the piston and normally you will see the intake side of the piston wear less than the exhaust side of the piston purely because of temperature. So this will be a much cooler side of the piston than this side. So this will expand a little bit less than the exhaust side. You can see here some factory markings on the, on the piston steel. They're still there, fresh as new, because this is where the transfer, transfer port is and there's no wear in the piston. As we move around here, you can see the wear on the piston. So that's where it's going up and down the Nicosil coating. You can see some fine scratches here. That's from contamination. That's um, dust entering the engine. So I clean my air filter before every run, but still, you can still see we've had some dust come in there. So this piston doesn't look too bad. It's not that worn. It would clean up and reuse again, but I'll just throw a new one in there. They're very, very cheap. Definitely worthwhile putting a new one in there. We'll have a quick look at the exhaust side. So you can see the exhaust side of the pistons just worn slightly more. And again, that's just purely because of this side heats up and expands much, much quicker than the other side of the piston. The moral of the story is, like I demonstrated in the other video, you need to warm your engine up before you start revving the guts out of it. If you're revving the guts out of it, what are you doing? you're prematurely expanding this piston before the rest of the engine gets a chance to, to come up to temperature and you wear it much quicker. So why are we here? Let's have a quick look at base gaskets and why they're so important. So base gaskets come in a variety of different sizes for a variety of different reasons, which I won't go into now, but keep an eye out for my engine rebuilding video, the full video, because I'll touch on it there. And it's, um, it can be a performance mod and it can be a liability too. So um, here I'll show you why it's a liability. So here we're gonna see the engine. So I don't have a base gasket fitted and we'll just have a look at the engines. So there's the engine at the bottom of the stroke and at the top of the stroke here, you'll see just there at the top of the stroke. Let me get it on top dead center. So there it is at the top of the stroke. Um, the squish value. What's the squish value? The squish value is the compression ratio of the motor. So it's the volume of air fuel mixture that gets uh, trapped in here. So what can you see here? Well, that piston is nearly touching the top of the cylinder there. So what would happen? Um, with a little bit of heat expansion, with a little bit of carbon on there, this piston would be bashing against the top of the cylinder. It would be putting a lot of stress on that uh, small end bearing and the big end bearing here. So the bearing at the top here and the bearing down below. So you can see here by adding in, well, let's add, let's, let's add the used one in. OK, 
gasket in, let's look at the difference now. So there's the top of the stroke, look at the difference. So can you see now why the correct thickness base gasket is very, very important? Oh, I believe you can. So the piston's off. Next thing to look for in the crank is any movement vertically. So you shouldn't be able to move that rod up and down at all. Non-serviceable if it is if it is junk, then um, then it obviously goes in the bin. Another thing to have a quick look for too is um, discoloration on any of those surfaces. It just means it's um, overheated. So that one looks fine, especially on the inner surfaces in there. But again, just check for movement, make sure it's fine. While the piston's off, um, we'll give that top surface a clean. If there is gasket left behind and you are cleaning that, don't let it go. Don't let it go into the into the case. So plug that case up with a bit of rag and then clean that off. You can just see there's a bit of old gasket there, but that'll come off with a bit of brake cleaner and rag. Just before we start assembly, I'm just gonna put some Loctite on all these fixings so they're ready to go. We'll start with the piston. The mark on the top is the exhaust. You'll also note the intake's got the little pin there where the ring meets. So um, we'll install one clip first and then install it onto the bottom end. So it's probably easier to install the clip facing the fan housing. So if that's the way the piston sits in there like that, um, we'll install this clip first. So one thing to note, the clip, when they're installed, the gap faces the bottom. So gap in that clip faces the bottom. There's a little beveled edge on that um, piston there and that's what we'll use to get this clip in. So start with one side in there and then work the other side in and once it's in, we can grab a screwdriver and, and push that in. So might be a bit hard to do here on, on camera, but. All right, so we're ready to put this together. I'm just gonna put this small end bearing in now. This is a gen genuine Zanal one. The CY one's a little bit different. So they look the same, but they are a little bit different. So just remember that. These side spaces or washers. We'll just put a bit of lube on the piston. Two stroke oil. Same on the pin. So we'll put the pin in the piston get it ready. You can see there, I'll just poke it through till it's just coming through. This side's already got the clip in it. And then it's a very, very easy job of just slipping that there and sliding the pin in. Now for the fun part, it's getting that last little clip in. Remember it faces down. want to make sure it's nicely and seated in there. I don't want to go into too much detail now, but um, there's also a setting here to be made with the ring gap um, if you're doing a custom engine, but uh, I won't touch on it now, but I'll show you how to do that in the upcoming video. So piston ring on next. Won't hurt to give that a bit of a wipe over. This side goes to the inlet where that little dimple is. You can be careful not to stretch that ring as you put it on too much. There it is there. Base gasket now. Remember the base gasket goes on one way. It's, it's, good. it's got the, the ports on it um, uh, specific. So when you see here, it'll line up. If it was on the wrong way, let me put it on the wrong way just to show you. If you put it on the wrong way, it doesn't line up. You can just see there it doesn't line up. So again, little mark to the exhaust. I've given that a bit of a clean too, the crank, so 
give that a bit of oil in there. Oil the piston. Cylinder as well. We'll compress that ring so it's sitting over the gap and then we'll feed it onto the cylinder. The cylinder is chamfered so it really fits in there nice and easily. So the cylinder's not torqued down but we'll just run it through a full revolution just to make sure everything's nice and free, which it is. Feels good. We'll talk it down now. So the manual calls for seven Newton meters. Let's see what seven Newton meters feels like. We'll go in a cross pattern. We'll just take the tension. There's seven. Let's have another feel. Seven. Right, now let's have a feel. Let's go by hand. Feels good. Sometimes it can be tricky when you're using a tension wrench that for that lower torque. So we'll just give that a quick nip. Which is about what it needs, another quarter turn. That's good. Ignition coil time, 0.3 of a millimeter feeler gauge there. Don't forget there's little spaces that go behind the ignition coil. I've already got Loctite on my screws, the screws need Loctite. So the magnets pull the coil down onto the flywheel. So no need to push that down. Can everybody, like, can, can we all see that? because uh, the Mini is in like 2,001 pieces and we're heading to the track in two days time. Blair, mate, where are you? Uh, anyway, the things I do for you blokes, look at that old scar face. Pretty as a picture on one side and ugly as sin on the other. Anyway, uh, some takeaways from today. Don't reuse vase gaskets, don't reuse gaskets on the intake manifold, don't reuse gaskets on the exhaust manifold. Uh, make sure your engine's clean before you pull it apart. That's another one. Oh, one thing I didn't touch on and I should have was the need to dress this, or well, the, the, the need not to dress the cylinder. So what do I mean by that? Uh, some people like to hone their, their nicker cell cylinders or clean them up. Look, it is really not necessary. Don't do it. Uh, you'll just cause yourself more grief. Um, at worst, or well, at best, you should just use a scotch white pad in there and, and give it a clean up. But look, it really, it's really not necessary. Some people even go to the extent of cleaning the cylinders um, with some hydrochloric acid to get rid of any of the piston that might have impregnated into the nicocell coating. Uh, again, it's, it's a pretty dangerous um, thing to do for the hobbyist um, for a number of reasons. One, obviously, is safety, and two, is hydrochloric acid will not touch that nicocell coating. It's way harder than that. Um, but if you get it in the exhaust port, in the transfer port, in the intake port, it'll eat those suckers out quicker than me on a bloody donut. So just be very careful if you're ever tempted to give um, hydrochloric acid a go and make sure it's on a, on a used cylinder so you get plenty of practice. But in my opinion, don't do it guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, share, comment, 
uh, what else do we miss? I don't know, all that cool stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you next time on The Build.